Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Heidi and you are watching Heidi Creates. Today is pretty much a continuation of last week's video. I'm going to show you how you can use up some of that fabric that you made with those scrap pieces that you had. We're going to make a bracelet cuff and not only that, I'm going to show you how you can make lace just using your sewing machine. With a little practice you can get quite proficient at it and have a lot of fun in the meantime. Anytime while you're watching this video, if you like what you're seeing, please hit the thumbs up. And also don't forget that if you hit that subscribe button and the little bell right next to it, you will get a notification every time I post a new video. That way you won't miss anything and there might be something really good that you'll want to check out. So thanks for coming to my channel and hope you enjoy. We'll see you next time. This is um, a small panel of fabric that I made um, just using up different scraps, sewed them together into kind of like a crazy quilt kind of um, arrangement here. No rhyme or reason to how I pieced them together. And then on top of that, um, <clears throat> I did some different, um, you know, stitching, uh, did some blanket stitching here, added in little bits of lace. Um, I got some, you know, rick rack down here. I also did some couching of some um, uh, some different yarn. So after I got done just um, with that piece, and this did kind of a little meandering stitch, little loops and circles. Basically, I just free motion quilted over the whole piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some pieces for making the cuff bracelet. So what I have here is the Pellon 551 Solufilm, and this is great for doing different lace appliques. It washes out and leaves behind whatever it is that you stitched. I'm going to lay the edge of this fabric I'm overlapping onto the water soluble film here. And I think I got it overlapped about an inch. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and pin it on, pin across there. I'll hold it in place. And I think I'm going to do, oh, let's see, cut off about three inches. Let's see, there's one, two, three inches here. I'm going to cut just a little over three inches away from that edge. That will give me plenty to play with and to hold on to while I'm doing my stitching design on the cuff. You got about three inches there and um, I'll take you to the next step. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to mark this cuff at about every two, let's see, two and a half inches. And I did that with this marker here. And have this large um, lid I'll use to get my, I'm going to do some scallops and so I'm going to use this lid actually. So I want the lid to sit right at the edge of the fabric. And I can see my marks. I'm kind of carrying the marks back to where so I know exactly how far I gotta move this pin so that I know how far to hold the lid back and what position. So if there's anywhere where you can't see the markings you want to make sure you darken that in so that you can see it what I'm going to do next I'm going to be following my lines which for you it might be kind of hard to see but the scallop lines that I drew on here I'm actually going to stitch um, a straight stitch uh, along that line, following that line all the way across the piece. And then I'm actually going to do it with a, my free motion uh, feature on my machine. And that just means I've dropped the feed dogs in. 
I'm in complete control of where I'm sewing. You don't have to do this. You can actually use a, your regular uh, sewing foot and, and let the machine move your fabric along with you with you directing it. You'll see why we're doing this in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and starting from the edge of the fabric. Basically what this is doing is it's establishing the edge that I'm sewing on there and it's attaching the water soluble film to this piece of fabric. So what I'm going to do now is actually cut away the fabric following the stitch, the scalloped stitch line I made. And you do not want to cut your water soluble film. You want to leave that on there. So cutting as close as I can to my stitching. I'm going to cut away Do this and keep it on camera. And some things are a little more tough to cut through because of the thickness of whatever is there. So just do the best you can. So once you get that design cut out, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to put my machine my sewing machine on a zigzag stitch. I'm going to use a fairly narrow zigzag. I'm going to do it at 1.5 millimeters and um, it's pointless setting the stitch length um, just because I have this on free motion. So, But I want to do, um, pretty much I want to do a satin stitch and that's just a create a nice finished edge to this cuff. I actually had a problem with the recording. When I completed that first satin stitch, then I moved the width up to a 2.0 and went over the first satin stitch that I did. And this is going to help just kind of really give it more of a clean edge. And if there's anything in there that needs to be trimmed, um, like right in here, I'm going to be trimming that a little bit later on. I'll do that after I've washed washed away the film and I've completed the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil now and I'm going to draw on the film the pattern that I want to follow for my lace edge. And I kind of got some ideas by looking at some different laces online and just kind of seeing what I like. I think um, I'll go ahead and draw that on. Um, and then come back and show you what I've come up with and how I will actually sew that on there. So I've done a little sketch on here and obviously all the lines have to be connected to one another in order to make this one um, piece. So it's, it's a rough sketching, it's really kind of difficult to see, but it just kind of gives me a guide as to how I want to um, sew the lace edge on here. And I'm just going to be using um, a straight stitch to create the lace edge, and I will actually be going over the same line several times just to um, give it some strength and make sure that it holds together well. To start this design, I will be using um, a straight stitch to begin with and then like I did before I will go over that straight stitch with a very narrow satin stitch. Well I've gone over my pencil design um, with a sharpie marker the fine tip um, just so I can see it better. I'm going to be using a straight stitch connecting all these lines to my original satin stitch along the cuff edge. So I'll be doing a straight stitch all across this pattern and then I'll come back after that and do a very, very narrow satin stitch over that.
It's probably a little bit difficult to see, but I have done the straight stitch over my um, drawn out design. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put it at a 1.5 um, millimeter width zigzag and do um, a satin stitch over the straight stitch lines. Well, I finished my zigzag over my design and you know with the black marking of the marker there it doesn't look real pretty but so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is um, I'm going to take this and wash this out and I'll just be using some nice hot water to rinse it all out and um, we'll come back and look at it once this is the water soluble is all washed out. I also wanted to mention that um, it goes a little faster as far as washing it out if you cut away all the excess. Just be sure not to cut any of your stitches. And I'll also on the back side, I'll be cutting away all the all the excess back here just so it um, doesn't take so long to wash it all out. I have the water soluble all washed out and it actually goes very quickly, especially with the hotter the water, the faster it dissolves. And um, it actually turned out really good, I think. Um, I have it up against the black fabric so you can see the um, pattern of the lace a little bit better. But um, we'll go ahead and let that dry before we move on to the next step. Well, I got my piece done on the edge there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to the size um, and to a strip to the width that I would like. Um, I was kind of thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of about three inches pretty close to three inches. Um, go ahead and cut that strip. So I've got my strip there for the cuff. Lace edging. And I think what I'm going to also do is I'm going to Hold these edges together, the ends, and I think I want to make this more rounded versus, uh, you know, sharp angle there. I think that'll, I think that'll make a nice cuff to this. Get this stuff out of the way. So you can see, you know, I still have some more here um, left over. Uh, I can make more cuffs with it or add it to a quilt piece. There's lots of things you can do with that. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to um, switch my machine over to um, this particular thread right here. It's a nice... Um, complement to the cuff and I'm going to go ahead and do satin edge all the way around the cuff. I'm going to, I'm going to use a narrow um, zigzag stitch to begin with and I'll probably do about three passes total and each time I go around I'm going to increase the width of the zigzag and I'll show that to you once I get that done. So I've done all the um, satin stitching that I'm going to do around the the perimeter of the cuff and I did do it three times. I started out with a 1.5 millimeter width. The second time I increased it um, a little bit more and then the third time I increased it to a 4.0 satin stitch and I also brought the satin stitch um, closer together just um, so the last time will be really, really tight and um, really finish that off nicely. And I like this thread. It has a nice sheen to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I decided I'm just going to use um, a button and buttonhole for the closure on this. And you can see I have a pin sticking in it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a buttonhole right there. And, um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what I got for some beads and uh, maybe do some little accents with some beading on here um, just to make it a little bit fancier. So I'll show you what I've done when I come back. 
Well, I've completed the uh, cuff bracelet as much as I'm going to do it for right now. Um, I did add a few beads on the surface here and then on each of the points of the lace that um, that I made. I went ahead and did a little beading on the end of that as well. Got the button for the closure. and So just another way of using up those scraps of fabric that you have from all of your other great projects. So get creative with it. You can get as fancy with this as you want to. You can do lace on both sides. You can you can go crazy. Make it beautiful and uh, a truly unique one, one of a kind piece.